please don't destroy my tent. It's happened before. Someone was throwing rocks at my tent last night. I just had to wait it out. Some joker sprayed paint all over my home during the night. It took hours to scrub off this morning. These are some dialogue exchanges that Linus shares with us, the player. But what lowlife, degenerate, delinquent would treat this poor starving homeless man so badly? I donned my investigating hat and I did some digging. Let's look at the first piece of evidence. Someone was throwing rocks at my tent last night. I just had to wait it out. Linus's tent is located on this small bluff in the mountains that's only accessible from one direction. He chose a wonderful strategic defensive location. However, due to him not manning his offensive position and instead cowering in his tent when he's under siege, we have no idea from which the origin of attack comes from. North, east, south, west, it's anybody's guess. From the east, the only people there are the Adventurers Guild and even Jojo Mart when they have some bloke working on clearing the landslide that the corporation had caused. Now if that fellow was working frantically at night and day, perhaps some of the debris had shot in Linus's direction. However, this dialogue from Linus can be exchanged well after the Jojo Mart people have cleared the landslide, which gives the indication that it might not be them. As for the Adventurers Club, Perhaps, but what reasons could they have for attempting to ruin Linus' day? Both parties have an interest in the mines. Linus for his sense of exploring, as mentioned by him, and the club for their sense of adventure. Maybe the guild didn't want to be outshined by this wild man. But then again, Marlin happily sends you, the player, into the mines. This is just speculation, of course. What about Robin's family? Maybe they're not as comfortable to have this wild man living behind them. He does have the high ground and if he truly goes wild, they are at a disadvantage on the low ground. But maybe the throwing of rocks at Linus's tent wasn't an intended action. It could have been an accident or not intended at all. Look, we all know Linus is poor. He doesn't care for the modern world. But who in the modern world can be seen as equal but actually have a home? This trailer which belongs to Pam and her daughter Penny comes to mind. What do you see in here? I see one bedroom, but the trailer is for two. Penny has a bedroom and Pam has a couch. Many mornings, Pam is found on the couch complaining about her headache because she overindulged the previous night. Possibly, just possibly, in one of Pam's drunken nights, she goes stumbling around, sees Linus's tent, the man who's even worse off than they are in her eyes, but he has a semi-comfortable bed he can sleep in. Taken by emotion, she takes out her frustration on this wild man's home. Maybe. We are missing another potential culprit. When Kent comes home, I don't see a bedroom for him, do you? But maybe his actions aren't caused by jealousy, but rather of fear. This man suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder as he was away at war. What if on a nightly stroll to clear his head, he comes across Linus' tent, a tent that may very well resemble the look of an enemy command tent, which sends this man into a defensive flurry to protect his loved ones. He grabs whatever weapons he can, which would be rocks in this case, and he lays assault on this command outpost before retreating, looking for reinforcements. But coming to his senses before finding help and having no memory of what just happened. Maybe. What about the other thing Linus says? Some joker sprayed paint all over my home during the night. Sprayed paint or paint in general. Who in the valley has access to or has in their possession paint bottles? Using my key to the town, I broke into everyone's home under the pretext of saying hello, but really, I had my keen eyes open for this type of evidence. And there are a few villagers who are now on my radar. Both the children, Jazz and Vincent, have what looks like to be paint or ink bottles in their rooms. Maybe the kids are being kids and took these bottles up and tried to make a nice pretty picture for Linus, showing him that someone cares, but failed and Linus took it as vandalism. Or perhaps they're just trying to vandalize, these kids can be mischievous. There are also these same bottles, and maybe even ink bottles in Harvey's house, the local doctor. Maybe Harvey tried to get everyone in the town under his wing in regards to providing medical services, but was turned down by this wild man who shuns modern society. And Harvey, taking that very personally, was sending a message. There is one other villager that also has these same implements of vandalism in their home. But before we get there, if you're enjoying this video thus far, do hit the like and subscribe button to let me know you're enjoying it. And the villager I'm referring to is Leah. 
Also an outsider to the town that lives on the outskirts of the village, Leah is the local artist. She works on wood, but she also has several paintings in her home. There is even a painting by her that is sitting in Elliot's house. But what could Leah have against Linus? Well, remember, Leah is trying to get by with her new profession, which is art. And the old saying of the starving artist comes to mind. She left the big city in pursuit of a creative career. In fact, a lot of her dialogue is somewhat reminiscent of Linus's. She likes the landscape of the area. She feels guilty when stepping on a bug, but accepts that it's impossible to live without hurting nature, or that there is plenty of food in the area if you know where to look. Does she not sound like a Linus 2.0, a younger version who is yet to go for Wild Woman? Although it seems like she's still learning the lifestyle and Linus still has her beaten in that regard, which could be that. Jealousy. Linus is able to forage all the food, leaving almost none for the starving artist. Perhaps she's trying to scare the alpha wildman out of the valley so that she can conquer this territory as her own and not be wary of competition that clearly outshines her in being wild. Perhaps, perhaps, but maybe there's something even more sinister and heroic at play in the background without us even knowing. Risking my own personal well-being, I snuck into the witch's hut and I found something rather interesting. There is a book in here called Curse the Countryside, a spell book for rural witches. What if the witch, who is still training to be a fully-fledged practitioner of the dark arts, is practicing the curse the entire valley? She has her spell book which may contain spells to rain showers of rock and paint on desired locations. And Linus, knowing full well the terror and horror that may eventually befall this entire valley, is the only line of protection the villagers have. And to protect their innocence, knowingly makes up lies to cover up the truth. To protect them from the horror that he is trying to keep at bay by saying that someone was only throwing rocks at my tent or someone spray painted my home. Well, at the same time, he may be in the midst of a colossal struggle between good and evil. Linus, the hero that Stardew Valley needs but doesn't deserve. He's not a hero, but a silent guardian that watches over the valley. A wild knight. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this video, Musketeers. Here are some other fun videos I made. One for all and all for one. Cheers, Musketeers.